Okay, so now we're gonna zoom in and focus on the component ETL. If you are building such a project, you're gonna spend almost 90% just building this component, the ETL. So it is the core element of the data warehouse and I want you to have a clear understanding what is exactly an ETL. So our data exists in a source system. And now what we want to do is, is to get our data from the source and move it to the target. Source and target could be like database tables. So now the first step that we have to do is to specify which data we have to load from the source. Of course, we can say that we want to load everything, but let's say that we are doing incremental loads. So we're going to go and specify a subset of the data from the source in order to prepare it and load it later to the target. So this step in the ATL process, we call it extracts. We are just identifying the data that we need. We pull it out and we don't change here anything. It's going to be like one to one, like the source system. So the extract has only one task to identify the data that we have to pull out from the source and to not change anything. So we will not manipulate the data at all. It can stay as it is. So this is the first step in the ETL process, the extract. Now moving on to the stage number two, we're going to take this extracted data and we will do some manipulations, transformations, and we're going to change the shape of those data. And this process is really heavy working. We can do a lot of stuff like data cleansing, data integration, and a lot of formatting and data normalizations. So a lot of stuff we can do in this step. So this is the second step in the ETL process, the transformation. We're going to take the original data and reshape it, transform it into exactly the format that we need, into a new format and shapes that we need for analysis and reporting. Now, finally, we get to the last step in the ATL process. We have the load. So in this step, we're going to take this new data and we're going to insert it into the target. So it is very simple. We're going to take this prepared data from the transformation step and we're going to move it into its final destination the target like for example data warehouse so that's ETL in a nutshell first extract the raw data then transform it into something meaningful and finally load it to a target where it's gonna make a difference so that's it this is what we mean with the ETL process now in real projects we don't have like only source and targets our data architecture gonna have like multiple layers depend on your design whether you are building a warehouse or a data lake or a data warehouse and usually there are like different ways on how to to load the data between all those layers and in order now to load the data from one layer to another one there are like multiple ways on how to use the ATL process so usually if you are loading the data from the source to the layer number one like only extract the data from the source and load it directly to the layer number one without doing any transformations because I want to see the data as it is in the first layer and now between the layer number one and the layer number two you might go and use the full ETL so we're gonna extract from the layer one transform it and then load it to the layer number two so with that we are using the whole process the ATL and now between layer two and layer three we can do only transformation and then load so we don't have to deal with how to extract the data because it is maybe using the same technology and we are taking all data from layer two to layer three so we transform the whole layer two and then load it to layer three and now between three and four you can use only the L so maybe it's something like duplicating and replicating the data and then you are doing the transformation. So you load to the new layer and then transform it. Of course, this is not a real scenario. I'm just showing you that in order to move from source to a target, you don't have to always to use a complete ETL. Depend on the design of your data architecture, you might use only a few components from the ETL. Okay, so this is how ETL looks like in real projects. Okay, so now I would like to show you an overview of the different techniques and methods in the ETLs. We have wide range of possibilities where you have to make decisions on which one you want to apply to your project. So let's start first with the extraction. The first thing that I want to show you is we have different methods of extraction. Either you are going to the source system and pulling the data from the source or the source system is pushing the data to the data warehouse. So those are the two main methods on how to extract data and then we have in the extraction two types we have a full extraction everything all the records from tables and every day we load all the data to the data warehouse or we make more smarter one where we say we're gonna do an incremental extraction where every day we're gonna identify only 
the new changing data. So we don't have to load the whole thing, only the new data. We go extract it and then load it to the data warehouse. And in data extraction, we have different techniques. The first one is like manually, where someone has to access a source system and extract the data manually. Or we connect ourselves to a database and we have then a query in order to extract the data. Or we have a file that we have to parse it to the data warehouse. Or another technique is to connect ourselves to API and do their calls in order to extract the data. Or if the data is available in streaming like in Kafka, we can do event-based streaming in order to extract the data. Another way is to use the change data capture, CDC, is as well something very similar to streaming. Or another way is by using web scrapping, where you have a code that's gonna run and extract all the information from the web. So those are the different techniques and types that we have in the extraction. Now, if you are talking on the transformation, there are a wide range of different transformations that we can do on our data, like for example, doing data enrichment, where we add values to our data sets, or we do a data integration where we have multiple sources and we bring everything to one data model, or we derive a new columns based on already existing one. Another type of data transformations, we have the data normalization. So the sources has values that are like a code and you go and map it to more friendly values for the analyzers, which is more easier to understand and to use. Another transformations, we have the business rules and logic. Depend on the business, you can define different criteria in order to build like new columns. And what belongs to transformations is the data aggregation. So here we aggregate the data to a different granularity. And then we have type of transformation called data cleansing. There are many different ways on how to clean our data. For example, removing the duplicates, doing data filtering, handling the missing data, handling invalid values, or removing unwanted spaces, casting the data types, and detecting the outliers, and many more. So we have different types of data cleansing that we can do in our data warehouse and this is very important transformation so as you can see we have different types of transformations that we can do in our data warehouse now moving on to the load so what do we have over here we have different processing types so either we are doing patch processing or stream processing patch processing means we are loading the data warehouse in one big patch of data that can run and load the data warehouse so it is only one time job in order to refresh the content of the data warehouse and as well the reports. So that means we are scheduling the data warehouse in order to load it in the day once or twice. And the other type we have the stream processing. So this means if there is like a change in the source system, we're gonna process this change as soon as possible. So we're gonna process it through all the layers of the data warehouse once something changes from the source system. So we are streaming the data in order to have real time data warehouse, which is very challenging things to do in data warehousing. And if you are talking about the load, Loads, we have two methods. Either we are doing a full load or incremental load. It's the same thing as extraction, right? So for the full load in databases, there are like different methods on how to do it. Like for example, we truncate and then insert. That means we make the table completely empty and then we insert everything from the scratch. Or another one, you are doing an update insert. We call it upsert. So we can go and update all the records and then insert the new one. And another way is to drop, create and insert. So that means we drop the whole table and then we create it from scratch and then we insert the data. It is very similar to the truncate but here we are as well <laughs> removing and dropping the whole table. So those are the different methods of full loads. The incremental load we can use as well the upserts so update and insert. So we're gonna do an update or insert statements to our tables or if the source is something like a log we can do only inserts so we can go and append the data always to the table without having to update anything. Another way to do incremental load is to do a merge and here it is very similar to the upsert but as well with a delete so update insert delete so those are the different methods on how to load the data to your tables and one more thing in data warehousing we have something called slowly changing dimensions so here it's all about the historizations of your table and there are many different ways on how to handle the historizations in your table the first type is scd0 we say there is no historizations and nothing should be changed at all so that means you are not going to update anything the second one which is more famous 
Cosmos, it is the SCD one, you are doing an override. So that means you are updating the records with the new information from the source system by overwriting the old value. So we are doing something like the upsert. So update and insert. But you are losing, of course, history. Another one, we have the SCD two. And here you want to add historizations to your table. So what we do, so what we do, each change that we get from the source system, that means we are inserting new records and we are not going to overwrite or delete the old data. We are just going to make it inactive and the new record going to be active one. So there are different methods on how to do historizations as well while you are loading the data to the data warehouse. All right, so those are the different types and techniques that you might encounter in data management projects. So now what I'm going to show you quickly, which of those types we will be using in our projects. So now if you are talking about the extraction over here, we will be doing a pull extraction and about the full or incremental, it's going to be a full extraction. And about the technique, we are going to be parsing files to the data warehouse. And now about the data transformations, well, this one, we will cover everything. All those types of transformations that I'm showing you now, is going to be part of the project because I believe in each data project, you will be facing those transformations. Now, if you have a look to the load, our project is going to be patch processing and about the load methods, we will be doing a full load since we have full extraction and it's going to be truncate and inserts. And now about the historizations, we will be doing the SCD one. So that means we will be updating the content of the data warehouse. So those are the different techniques and types that we will be using in our ETL process for this project. All right, so with that, we have now clear understanding what is a data warehouse and we are done with the theory part. So now the next step, we're going to start with the project. The first thing that we have to do is to prepare our environment to develop the project. So let's start with that. 